Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and it's spring semester 2013. From our last video session, your assignment was to write a field calculator script in Python that will return the major contour. So in other words, contours that are in increments of 100. So for example, for this record, it's in an increment of 100, so we want that value to be 400. In the next record, the major contour would be 100. The next record, the contour value is 150 meters, so that's not in increments of 100, so we want this to be a value of zero. Okay, so I made a little um, field calculator script, and let me unselect first. and it's in Python, and I saved it to a little text file, so let me load it. Okay, so here's the script, and what we do is define a function, and you can def call that function anything you want to name it, and then we're going to pass to that function an input variable. So that will be the value of each contour. And then basically we'll set a variable major equal to zero, and then take our input value, divide it by 100, and get the remainder. So this percentage sign is for mod, the mod function. So that will give us the remainder of the in contour variable divided by 100, and we'll store that in this variable. And then if that variable is equal to zero, then we know we've got a value in increments of 100. And then we would set our major to be equal to that value. And if it's not, major is just gonna simply be equal to zero. And then basically what we'll do is return that major contour value. So if this result of dividing our input divided by 100, give us the remainder, and if that remainder is um, zero, then we know we have a major contour in increments of 100. Okay, so to use this function, what we want to do is don't misspell it. So the easiest way not to misspell it is to copy our function name. So control C for copy, and then control V for paste. So that guarantees we're not going to misspell our function. And then we're going to pass some field to that function. So the safest thing to do is we don't want to misspell our fields, so simply go to the list of numeric fields and double click on the field that we want to pass. So in this case we'll double click on contour and that's the field we're going to pass to our function. So the first time through contour is equal to 400, so 400 divided by 100, that will give us a remainder of zero, so our major contour will be set to 400. The second time through, contour is equal to 100, so we'll pass that into our function. 100 divided by 100, the remainder is zero, so our major contour will be 100. And a third time through with a value of 150, 150 divided by 100, the remainder is not zero, so it will be set to be zero. And then we simply say, okay, well, let's run this um, Python script as a field calculator function. Okay, I got an error message there as an unexpected indent. And the reason is, is I have a couple spaces here. So once again, we're working with Python where spaces really matter. So we wanna start our function at the first character and then just okay. So that, simply said, okay, 400 divided by 100, the remainder is zero, so return our contour value. 100 divided by 100, the remainder is zero, so return our contour value. 150 divided by 100, the remainder is not zero, so simply set that major contour as zero. And then we could also save this as a text file just by hitting the save button if it's not already saved. Okay, in the next two video sessions, I'm going to teach you about using Python string functions in 
the field calculator. So for example, if we go in our field calculator and we use the Python parser and click on string, there is a whole series of functions that are Python functions that are applicable to strings. And in this session, what I'll teach you is the functions that are used for checking um, different things with strings. And then in the next session, we'll deal with functions that actually we use to change um, string values. Okay, so we'll test drive some of these um, string functions in the Python shell. So the first thing we'll do is make a string variable containing some characters. Okay, so one thing you can do with um, strings is we can use inherent functions that come with strings. So if we do dot, it will list all the functions applicable to this string variable. And one of the functions is find. So that allows us to search for some substring. So this substring could be one character or it could be many characters. And you could specify where to start in terms of the index position and where to end the search. Um, here we're just going to search for does this string contain a zero? And if it does, it will return the index position of that zero. So it says yes, that string has a zero and it's at position nine. So this would be one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, when I started with one, but remember strings are indexed at zero. So position nine is really here because this is really position zero. Okay, so Alt P for previous command. And let's search for this string, does it contain a character Z. Okay, and it won't contain a character Z, so what will it return? So it returns the value of negative one. So whenever you use this function dot find, if it returns the value of negative one, it simply means it did not find that character string. So for example, let's look for four zeros. And it says there is no occurrence of four zeros in that string. And let's look for three zeros. And it says that is does occur in this string and it begins at index position number nine. Okay, another handy function is the replace function. So here's an example. We've got this string and it's got a O rather than a zero. So here's the O character, and here's the zero character. So what we want to do is change this so it has a zero character. So you would think you'd be able to do this, string test dot replace. So replace the old with a new. So replace the O character with a zero. and it prints back, the O has been replaced with a zero. This is deceiving because if we look at our variable, it did not really do that. So what you could do is, so let's try this and see if this will work. So replace the O with a zero. So that's another way you can use that function. Okay, when you're working with text files, sometimes you'll get tab characters in text files, and they're a backslash T character. So you could use the dot replace um, backslash T, but there's also a function called expand tabs. So what this function says is, okay, find the tabs, and wherever there's a tab, replace it with four spaces. 
and you as the Python programmer, you can specify how many spaces you want to replace these tabs with. So this is an advantage um, because basically it doesn't matter how many tabs are in this string, it'll just find every tab, so every backslash T, and replace it with four spaces. So now if we look at our string test, it has four spaces where there used to be a backslash T. Okay, there are also string functions in Python that return uh, true or false depending upon a condition. And they're typically called a Boolean function. So let's make two string variables. So this one will contain numeric values, but they're string characters. And this will contain just text. Okay, so one um, common check is you can use the in operator. So for example, is the character zero in our first string? So is it in our first string? So then if we look at check zero, it returns true. And then we could say, okay, is it in our second string? So our second string was string txt, and it returns false because zero was not in our second string. Okay, if you need to know how many times a character occurs in a string, you can use the dot count request. So for example, I could say print uh, my string value dot count, tell me how many times the zero character is in that string. So it occurs in that string three times, or print string text.count, and tell me how many times the A character, capital A, occurs in that string, and it doesn't occur, so it returns a zero. Okay, you could also ask, what is the last character in the string, so print um, string value dot, and that function should be ends with. So does it end with a zero? And it does. And does it end with a one? And that's false. You can also ask whether a string contains exclusively numeric um, characters. So for example, print string value dot is digit. And that's true. This, this contains only digits as opposed to print string text dot is digit. And that's false because it does not contain exclusive um, numeric digits. Okay, the opposite would be that, does it contain only um, alphabetic characters and no digits? So for example, alt P. So this time instead of is digit, we could say is it alpha? which means does it contain just alphabetic characters? And it does, because when we created it, it just contained these characters, which are all alphabetic characters. Okay, you could also ask questions about um, the case of a string. So is it all uppercase or is it all lowercase? So for example, string value dot, is it all lowercase? No. And is it all uppercase? No. Okay, we also have a function that's the opposite of this dot ends with function, and that's the starts with function. So for example, we've got this variable, and we could say, okay, does it start with 
a character in, and true, it does. Okay, there's also Python string functions for changing um, cases, so uppercase versus lowercase. So for example, he'll we'll make a um, string variable, and then we could say, okay, let's change that dot, and let's make it all lowercase. So then if we look at that variable, it is all lowercase. And we could do the opposite, so dot upper, and that makes it all uppercase. And then you could also say, well, if it's an uppercase, make it a lowercase. If it's a lowercase, make it an uppercase. So we could say print dot, and the function is swap case. And once again, it did not change that variable. So if we look at it, it has its original value. So if you really wanted to change it, you would say strtxt equals, and that would swap cases. So then if we look at it, it did swap cases. Okay, and then the final thing is a function called dot title. So, for example, let's make a string variable, and we'll just say um, this is an example. What dot title will do is uppercase the beginning of every word. So here's my first word, my next word. So in this case, these four words in this string will all have an uppercase. So once again, we could say print, or we could make it permanent. So our new string variable is equal to the old one dot title. Okay, so for our next video session, what I want you to do is write an ArcGIS Python script in your field calculator that does two things. Number one, you've got a string field and it has numeric characters in the string. And you need to replace zeros wherever there's an O character and replace one wherever there's an L character. Okay, and your second assignment is you've got another field and it's a string field. And what you need to do is it contains a month of the year. And for each month, you want it to begin with an uppercase and then have lowercase. So for example, if that field is March and it's all lowercase, you want to have a capital M and then lowercase a r c h. Or if it's all uppercase March, you want to change that so it's just uppercase M and then lowercase a r c h. And we'll go over the solutions to those two field calculator scripts at the beginning